Everyone, welcome back to No Such Thing as a Fish, the comic relief marathon, and uh, we're coming into our 33rd fact. Um, now, unfortunately, one of our guests, um, Professor Alex Roberts, uh, is unable to be here, very sadly. Um, apologies are sent. Um, so we have brought back in uh, the uh, the creator of us all. Um, uh, <laughs> He's, he's a wonderful, oh, yeah. wonderful man. It is John Lloyd. <laughs> Let's bring it back in. Hey! Um, Welcome back, John. Sorry. So just a quick uh, update, uh, boss, just to let you know, uh, we've made £105,000 now, which is very exciting. Um, it's not quite the million that I was looking for. <laughs> However, I have been informed by someone called Jesper on Twitter, oh, sorry, on YouTube that... Uh, Roughly, that should translate into a million Danish kroner. So, actually, right. I think we've achieved the uh, the goal. But look, no, we yeah. can at what? least we can at least say to Sandy Toxvig when we see her at QI next week that we got a million. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But listen, we don't want to stop here at 105. We want to raise as much as possible. So don't please see that as us meeting the target. There is no target. We just want as much as possible. So, uh, John, thank you so much for coming back and joining us again in this uh, final stretch of the race. Uh, let's go to fact number 33. And that is John Lloyd. Well, I'm kind of spoiled for choice here, guys, because uh, <laughs> I just found the original pitch for QI when I was trying to raise some money to start it in the early oh, wow. 2000s. Um, and so there's all these amazing things that I'd completely forgotten. Um, and I can't even now remember which ones have been in the program or not. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if any of us can. I yeah. think that's the answer we know. This one, I know Dickens came up earlier because I've been up for hours watching you. Before plumping for the title Martin Chuzzlewit, Charles Dickens toyed with Martin Sweetledew, Martin Sweetleback, Martin Sweetlewag, and Martin Chuzzletoe. <laughs> <laughs> kind of I always, um, when I was reading it, my brother always called it Martin Guzzleshit, and that's always how wow. Martin Guzzlewit. So, so, but that wasn't on his list. Mr. That also that also feels like we're going to have Eddie Izzard on fairly soon, and Eddie has a fantastic routine about how M uh, Engelbert Humperdinck arrived yeah. in the day. Bingle Dak Shingy Dick, you know, all that sort of stuff. Bingle Butt Bombie Dink, Bangle Butt Womble Back, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's, really, it's really fascinating going back through this stuff because, for example, there was a bunch of facts that I used to retail. You remember the one about the invention of basketball, for example? Yes, yeah. Uh, which is the thing that persuaded John Mitchison, the first re ever researcher of QI, to, to join the thing, which is the idea that it was invented by a guy in Massachusetts, so there's a game that they could be played in a, in a physical education college. It could be played indoors when wet for people who don't know the story. Uh, and he uh, was screwing up balls of paper trying to invent this game. And he thought, oh, that's it. That's the game. So it's a, a ball into a, a wastepaper basket. So he rushed, and they used to use peach baskets in those days um, for collecting peaches in the peach season. So he rushed into the head with these two uh, peach baskets. So it's so simple. We just nail one of these up either end of a, a big room, and we get an ordinary soccer ball, and we bounce the ball, and we try and get them things into the basket. The guy says, amazing. Took off like wildfire, went all over Massachusetts, New England, swept America by storm. And it was 21 years before anyone had the idea of cutting a hole in the bottom of the basket. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, he said to poke it out. There was a little hole for moisture in the bottom of the basket. They poked it out with a broom, or a guy had to come in with a ladder and physically pick That's the ball so out. Funny. It's extraordinary. And this is, you've got to remember that QI existed before Wikipedia. So there wasn't that thing you could just look stuff up. Mm -hmm. I had to find that in the Encyclopedia Britannica. Mm -hmm. And I remember reading a whole book. One of the facts I had was. There are 4,360 species of frogs, as there were known then, and only one of them goes ribbit, which has been on the program, which is the Southern Pacific tree frog, because it's the one that lives in Hollywood. So every time they wanted a frog in a movie, ribbit, ribbit. So you've got Californian frogs coming in Vietnam and then, you know, the Australian outback where they don't really exist. But since that time, nearly 20 years ago, there are now 7,300 uh, species of known frog. So although wow. we know there's terrible diversity um, shrinkage, 
Not in frogs, apparently. Have we found any more that go ribbits? Do you know? Yeah. No, or, I don't know. So. I watched a documentary on uh, Netflix called We Are the Champions, where they showed the world championship in frog jumping. Uh, what you do is you find your bullfrog and you put it down and then you kind of shock it by banging the floor and it jumps, jumps, jumps. And after three jumps, it's the distance it's gone in those three jumps. Ah. That is the uh, record. And the world record in frog jumping is held by Rosie the Rib- Rosie the Ribbiter. Beautiful. <laughs> really? That's awesome, isn't Very it? Good. I mean, that's not... Is that her birth name? Because... <laughs> <laughs> So, so I remember so talking about no Wikipedia. So I've got uh, three editions of the Encyclopedia Britannica, as you know, the 19, what's it, the 1914 edition, is it? Um, well, the 11 is a really good one. Yeah. 1911, the 33, and the 1989 or something. And I'd, I'd attempted to read all the way through this. And one of the things I discovered in there, apart from the basketball story, which is in the Macropedia, is tardigrades, which obviously you're all familiar oh, with. Yeah. Water bears or moss piglets, these almost immortal tiny little things that live in damp guttering and so on and i remember going to the biggest bookshop in oxford thinking i've just discovered this amazing thing and going to the the um uh blackwells and the the science section of blackwells huge bookshop <coughs> and going to the person in the natural history section how many books do you have on tardigrades and she goes what <laughs> what are those and and so, yeah. and she looked it up on the system, and there was then only one book in the world about tardigrades. Wow. And basically, Mitch and I were the only two people who ever heard of these things. <laughs> right. Um, so that was an extraordinary. So I've just found the note on this. It's like two pages of notes. And I just discovered this thing that I'd forgotten. Tardigrades <laughs> have only got one ball. You know, like, really? Wow. And the females only have one ovary. Isn't that extraordinary? I'd completely That's forgotten amazing. that. Wow. Because actually they're quite famous now, aren't they, Tardigrades? Yeah. Because yeah. They, w- were they on the moon or something? They, yeah. they yeah. landed on the moon. Not by, oh, they spilled on the moon, didn't they? There was an Israeli mm. probe which had some on and it accidentally it broke on impact. But we think they can oh. survive. With, they can survive very low temperatures and they don't. They can go into a kind of hibernation state. Yeah, so that's yeah. the hibernation state. Type sort of, of, sort of the I worst thing for us to have dropped on the moon, right? Because we're, our constant paranoia is contaminating space and that's the reason why, you know, with Cassini probe, we have to crash it into a planet because you don't mm. want to leave any rubbish there. And we've uh-huh. accidentally dropped on the moon. The one thing we know is yeah. kind of immortal, completely immune <laughs> to radiation, temperature, pressure. And I mean, we've given them bags much. of food to eat. <laughs> children's poo and oh, yeah. children's poo, poo. Uh, are there yeah that's where yeah. it comes in how big are they they're tiny aren't they they're really oh, small yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> size of a cat no but we yeah. are talking sort of like the micro yeah, yeah. yeah. you yeah. can't see them okay the it's it's rather it's astonishing because we we've been doing it so long all of us qi now that we sort of take it for granted that it's a normal activity but it wasn't once it was a very odd thing i remember i showed um the very first edition uh to sarah and the first edition not the pilot but the first broadcast edition the recording lasted three and a half hours most of which was people going um no i don't know anything about that <laughs> uh with hugh laurie who is a, who is extraordinary just shows how much water's flown under the bridge Hugh Laurie was so grateful to be asked because he was completely out of work. <laughs> and oh, now he's, still, he's still always begging to be on, isn't he? But we just <laughs> don't have the spots. <laughs> <laughs> but to think that we were the first people really in to break the idea that was more than one moon, that um, that there were only eight planets really, that most people didn't know, the, everybody, every kid knows these things now. Yeah. But, uh, I think that I wonder how many moons we've, how many times we've changed the number of moons. We're really confusing the hell out of the kids. I think <laughs> there've been sort of one, two, many, many hundreds, no moons. The Earth is a moon of the, uh, is a moon of the moon as much as the moon is a moon of the Earth. Yeah. You know, it's, there are so many theories. But it's um, not really about QI. Is not really as we know about being right. It's no. about being more right than the common wisdom or the cliche. And the most important thing is to stay curious. And we all know our experience as researchers is to be proved wrong on something is almost as exciting as to find a new thing you've never heard of because mm-hmm. you go, okay, we can move on. You know, it's uh, and then yeah. of course the early ones are full. There was no way of checking these things. If you read it in a book, there wasn't a second book that you could find to, 
Yeah. <laughs> but I was just the a little thing. things. I, there was all these little bits of news cuttings I had, which is um, the idea was the original website was going to have quite interesting news at the bottom, so a cutting. Hmm. Here's a good one from The Independent. Father Sean O'Leary, a Dublin parish priest, was jumping up and down as he urged his choir to put more effort into singing the hymn I Wonder Where I'm Bound when an iron grid collapsed and he disappeared into a heating duct. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's so good. I found, uh, I've been, key I take photos of the news because uh, I, I read a newspaper every day and um, I just sort of thought I'd find what, whatever quite interesting news I saved most recently. I really like this one. This is from uh, the Times last week. There is a sport called motorball, which is motorbike football. And there is only one club in the UK. And they are appealing for people to take it up because they want someone to play against. And they don't have anyone to play against. <laughs> oh, so what they, do they do then? Well, it was really big in the 30s. And, you you know, you're on a motorbike yeah. and you play football. That's it. It's like polo, right. but your legs are the mallet. And, um, oh, really? I, so I mean, it, yeah. <laughs> um, but who? So when there was only one football team in Scotland, for instance, they used to play against themselves, and they would be like the you know the married guys against the unmarried guys, or the you know people who live in the north yeah. of the town. Versus, is it that kind of thing? I guess I think it's be. exactly that. They say there aren't enough venues, and there aren't, it's quite oh. expensive maintaining the equipment because everyone needs their own motorbike. So <laughs> it's really hard. So if you are watching us and you need a good sport to get out and meet people, try taking up moto ball, <laughs> ring up the Hazen Southall Motorball Club, and form your own club somewhere else right it's one of those that's one of those things where qi research uh leads you like opens a door to a world you can't believe you didn't know like the number of mad sports in the world mm. is it's unbelievable i think i and also you just find new ones i think this week i found out the national sport of afghanistan i think is bush bush Kazi, is it goat pulling which is i mean it's essentially polo but instead of ball <laughs> you have a headless goat and oh yeah what, throw, what's it called bushkazi uh, bushkazi i think yeah that's right uh or Booz, bouzkashi sorry uh bouzkashi and yeah it's very popular uh, well, they, what they want to do is do that but on, multi on motorbikes right <laughs> that would be <laughs> yeah that'd be best perfect of all worlds. and uh, what, what's the sport with the massive ball that they played at the turn of the 20th uh, century bushball. Oh, bushball. Bushball. yeah with a ball you know bigger than a person i've got our our book that we wrote about it in so i could show everyone a photo <laughs> of it uh because it was ginormous um and the idea was if you watch american football it's quite hard to see where the ball is and actually that's part of the sport you trick someone into thinking it's going that way it actually goes that way but yeah. people thought well that's not a very good spectator sport what we need to do is make the ball bigger and shall we make it a bit bigger no let's <laughs> no. make it this much bigger let's make it massive closer 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 <laughs> You're going to do it, do it. <laughs> That's so good. I read, just speaking of big things, I read a fact, which is, <laughs> you know, <laughs> hey, that's how we do it. That's how we do it. Um, you know those big-ass fans that you see in Ikea? Those massive fans? Um, oh, they, no. they produce these really big-ass fans, and they are produced <laughs> by a company called Big Ass Fans. That's who supplies really? the fans to uh, Ikea. Yeah, uh, nice. lovely little thing. Um, also discovered that United Airlines in 2019, I was trying to look up a few charity things uh, for us to potentially talk about. They released for charity a, a recipe book of all their in-flight food, as if that was oh. a mm. thing. Now, it was mainly for their first class, uh, but they also had economy in there. But I just can't imagine who's who's going for in-flight yeah. economy food i think i think in it. the covid age when no one's allowed to get on a plane maybe people are trying to simulate the experience of going on holiday yeah. in their own home yeah but they released it in 2019 so either they knew that something was coming <laughs> <laughs> well then i don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist but we need to look into that <laughs> get reese back <laughs> So I'm just looking up on the in the S database, S for sport, to see if I can find any mm. unusual ones. Um, it says here that spider wrestling has been banned in the Philippines uh, yes. because the children found it more entertaining than going to lessons. Have we done that? Uh, we've we've I'm talked about it on the podcast, that. but yeah. it's very popular yeah. in uh, in the Philippines, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. What is it? You get like a rod and you put a spider on both sides and then they go to each other or something like that. I think, yeah, and it's so. last man standing. I think. Yeah. 
and it promotes gambling as well. I think kids are gambling yeah. on it and skipping school. Um, and yeah. yeah. There's a one a fact about ice hockey here, uh, which is weird. In 2017, a man in Pittsburgh who hid a catfish sprayed with cologne in his underpants and smuggled it into an ice hockey match <laughs> was cleared of all charges. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would argue that's not a fact about ice hockey. That's a fact about a catfish covered in cologne. <laughs> <laughs> there was, um, oh, John's gone, but um, I, there is a hockey team, I think, I'm making. I'm going so much off memory. It might be wrong, but I think it's like people throw catfish onto the yeah. rink or something. and octopuses uh, and yeah, yeah I yeah. think so. And it's like a traditional thing. There was a guy I always liked. That guy, I think he was called Brad March and or something. But he was a hockey player. But he all kept getting banned for licking his opponent's faces. And yeah, it's just... fair. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's fair. You'd get stuck to them in the ice hockey arena, though, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> one, of the things, one of the things that's so lovely about you guys and the podcast, what's so great about it, and why it's the, in a way the purest thing that QI does, it's closest to the original thought. It's, people often, when, we, when we're starting, people say, oh, I love the tri that trivia show you do. I say, we don't do trivia, because trivia is unexplained interestingness. It's just like, Oh, this amazing wing. Well, why? I don't know. But the fact that James knows about catfish and Andy knows about catfish and ice hockey wings is it's what really QI is. It's a quest for meaning, isn't it? It's like not just this is amazing, but why is it? Why is it so? Why is it like that? Why is there more than one moon? All that kind of stuff, which is what makes it so bottomless and why you guys can go on talking for seven years without drawing breath or 20 hours of a spread. <laughs> <laughs> because everything's connected, isn't it? So it's not just like a standalone thing. You know, the Eiffel Tower has 20 million rivets in it. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. It goes always going deeper, always going stranger. And of course, the deeper you go, the less you know, don't you? We all have this peculiar thing that the more we know, the less we know. Yeah. 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 Um, like actually, I was just reading, sorry, to draw, I was suddenly read the fact that, you know, you mentioned frogs, and I remember that frogs' tongues are 50,000 times stickier than human tongues, and we've said that fact before, whatever, and then suddenly I thought, what the fuck does that mean? And I mean, it's <laughs> like stuff like that, you're like, hang on, how, who measured the stickiness? What are they using to do that? What do you mean 50,000 times? And yeah, you just go deeper and deeper, don't you, and go, hang on, this yeah. is asked more questions than it's answered. Sorry, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just going to say, uh, we, we're actually going to cut to a break now um, because time is coming up for us to introduce our penultimate fact and guest. John, thank you so much for jumping Thanks, back John. in. Um, so cool to, even for us as QI people, I'm sure for people online, just hear about the philosophy, where QI came from, its origins. Every time it's just, it's awesome to hear. And so I hope everyone watching also enjoyed that too. Um, we're on 106,000, everybody. Let's yeah. let's get some more. Let's keep yeah. going. And um, we've got big guests coming up, um, two big guests coming up. So why not in these last two ones, let's just, you know, give us all your money. Why not <laughs> just, you know, and we'll, we'll just it. think, how cool is that? So uh, we'll go for a quick break and we'll be back in a couple of minutes with Eddie Izzard. Hello, everybody. That was fun, wasn't it? Well, now you have to pay. Please, please go to comicrelief.com slash fish and give us all of your money so that it can be spent on fabulous causes around the world. There are many more videos where these came from. So bring all of your money and give it to us. Link is below. Click on the link. 